The new 2021 Ford Bronco is one of the most highly anticipated 4x4s to be unveiled by any manufacturer in the recent memory. Speculations abound about what the finished product is going to be once it gets on the streets come this come this um, this summer. Uh, will the 2021 Ford Bronco live up to the intense hype? Or will a curtain drop? We don't know. Now, only time will tell. Now, the Jeep Wrangler's Ford new design Bronco holds true to the vehicle heritage as a purposeful utility vehicle with real off-road capability. Or if like the uh, Chevy Malibu, Jeep Cherokee, uh, Chevy Blazer, and so many others, the 2021 Ford Bronco proves to be nothing more than a watered-down shadow of a much-beloved original. That's what mount that we make that we have to see. We have to see. We hope with all of our hearts that this is not the case. I don't think that it'll be the case. It seems like they got a really, really great product. Now, Jeep has been very careful with Wrangler in this regard, and the GL Wrangler is the perfect example of a vehicle manufacturer hanging on to a model of intrinsic attributes with an iron fist, despite added deficiencies and difficulties with aero, mileage, manufacturing, and assembly. But Jeep knew to admit things like the fold-down windshield, solid front and rear axles, removable doors will be the death nail of the Wrangler credibility. The same as if Harley Davidson and the Indian were to scrap their motorcycles, belching vibrating V-twin v engines for a Honda Goldwing flat six derivative. And for those caught like Wrangler followers, a bit of added wind noise. Our slightly leaky windshield gasket, our little bouncy ride, become part of a charm of owning the Wrangler. Much the same way as the Harley Riders relish, relishes the staccato blot, 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 are the rocketing uh, V-twin engine and the upright, uptight handling. Boy, you know, we wait with anticipation. I mean, when these things, when these Broncos get out on the street and we see them and people start owning them and then we'll see what they're really all about. Let's go over a little bit of Bronco history right quick. Now, the first generation of the 1966 to 1977 Ford Broncos has solid front and rear axle suspended from the frame with a somewhat revolutionary for a time coil spring front suspension located by a simple seat bushing radius arm design. Now, the top and the door were fully removable and the windshield could be folded down for low clearance situations. Now, the 1978 to 1979 Ford Broncos saw the body balloon to the F-150 dimensions to counter the success of the Chevy full-size Blazer. But the solid front and rear axle configuration remained. The inline six of the early Bronco was dropped in favor of a 351 uh, mil for a 400M V8 engine. But a manual transmission option remained, and although the cab sported a non-removable section about the front passenger, the roof above the rear passenger and cargo area was removable. Finally, in 1980, the front suspension was revamped to Ford Go Fassy uh, twin traction beam set up with the uh, front coils, but the rear axle remained suspended from the leaf spring, and the rear roof section remained removable. And like the early Broncos, 1966 to 77, the option of an inline six straight was back on the ticker. And in any of these versions, the Bronco remained relatively easy to modify for off road use. And prove the durable utilitarian workhorse at that. Now that's the history of the uh, Ford Bronco, just in a nutshell. Now let's talk about the uh, removable top and the water resistant interior. Now the Ford Bronco has the removable roof, which is definitely nice. Th three piece roof like that of the Wrangler. So either section above the front passenger head can be removed independently or just the rear section over the uh, passenger and cargo areas. All three. Toss in a full factory soft top option as well. And hey, let's make the doors mount to the exterior mounted hinges. That are easy to remove by one person. And I go back on with no need for an alignment or adjustment. That's what makes the Ford Bronco awesome, is that you could put those doors in the back. And now, not only that, Ford Bronco drain plugs on the floorboards, water-resistant switches, and instrument panels. 
uh, low frills rubber mat, factory spray on liner option in lieu of carpet. And for the seats, how about a low cost off road friendly vinyl covering with rider resistant foam? Will sop up moisture like a sponge or propagate mold growth. We don't want that. And Ford is on top of that. That is definitely not going to happen. I tell you, man, we got we have a beast, the Ford Bronco. And the Jeep Wrangler is just a beast, too. I mean, Jeep is just doing awesome things. Now, let's talk about the off-road axles and differentials. Now, the front underpinning, I mean, we know about the Ford Bronco. And the Ford Bronco independent suspension, the front underpinnings, everything about it is about off-road capabilities. And it's also about everyday driving. We know the Bronco is the beast in that. Now, I'm talking about a solid axle, much like the Eventac Dana 44s, found under the GL Rubicon Wrangler for the off-road package. What could be better than an electric front and rear selectable lockers? Cut for 32 spline axle shafts and a gearing option, 3.73, 4.10, 4.88 from the factory. And you know what? The Bronco hit it right on the money. Now let's get back to the engine. We know with the Bronco is a two liter and then there's also the six cylinder. And we know that um, it's the 2.7 liter that's gonna be used on the Bronco. But we all had dreams of the Ford 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 and being a natural fit under the 2021 Ford Bronco and could easily deliver that 400 horsepower or more with the decent economy. And we all know the 2.3 liter twin turbo EcoBoost Gives the commuter a warm, give us a warm and fuzzy feelings. And we know that's a, you know, beast of an engine. And we know that the Ford Bronco itself with the V6 is going to be kicking out some good horsepower to be able to handle all this. So there's a lot. And then back to the suspension. The huge allure of the JL Wrangler by way of the Inducies at the market is how easy it is to lift and modify the suspension for larger tires and serious off-road use. Are simply to tailor the suspension to better suit your needs and desires. No matter what, that's something uh, you're just not going to easily be able to pull off with an independent front suspension or independent rear suspension design. The 2021 Ford Bronco, uh, sticking to the conventional four link front suspension with the mid length arm and a track bar in conjunction with simple yet effective coil levers. That's way affordable leveling, leveling a lift. Pucks could be utilized without the need for new coil levers and dramatically altering the geometry yet. Taylor aftermarket parts could be used for more serious off-roading. You know, and that's what Bronco did. You know, we came, they came out with the Sasquatch package. And the stents and everything about this is just a beast. And then back back to the off-road bumpers, the rockers, and the armor. The 2021 Ford Bronco is going to em emulate some boxy flat body panels from the early 66 to 77 Broncos to help protect against body damages and to aid aftermarket accessorizing and personalization. The front and rear bumpers so they can be independent of the body panels, allowing them to be removed and replaced with aftermarket versions of the owner preference. No integrated fascias here. The factory 2021 Ford Bronco off-road package equipped it with the uh, winch capable high clearance steel front bumper and a steel rear bumper with integrated tow hooks, D-ring mounts. Uh, likewise, the 2021 Ford Bronco is a beast and you can see the um, recovery points and everything about this Ford Bronco is just a beast. It's off-road capability and everything else is just on point. Folks, there's so much to know. Let's look through some, some of these picks with the Ford Bronco. And we just see the awesomeness, the space, the uh, rather resistant interior. I mean, everything, even, even including the leather, is made from a base, you know, it's like designed like a baseball glove, durable. It's meant to age. Ford has put a lot of energy into this. And when it comes out, this is not going to be no slouch, folks. And then you have the Jeep. The Jeep is respectable, got a great reputation. And just awesome. What great competition. It's almost like going to a fight and you know the two fighters are going to give you 12 rounds instead of knocking somebody out in 40 to 43 seconds. We know that this is going to be 
this is going to be a long, long, long adventure, folks. And it's just going to be so much change. I mean, you got the Rubicon 392. I mean, great interior, great drive. I've driven the Rubicon before, but not the 392. And I, I was impressed. Very impressed. And I actually went to a dealer and actually sat down with someone. And I was about to, you know, I was really contemplating on buying one. That was like two, two years ago. Oh, but I didn't at that time because the one I wanted and specced out was like almost like sixty something thousand dollars, if not seventy. And I was like, "Wow, you know, you got to be ready for these payments, folks. And if you are, count yourself blessed. I mean, just look at this. I mean, the engine and everything, the interior of the Jeep, everything. We got some great competitors here, folks. This is a Automotive Reviews. Thanks for watching, and remember, like, share, and subscribe. And have an awesome and fantastic day." Hi, this is Bruce from AO Automotive Reviews, encouraging you to subscribe, to like, and to continue watching these videos. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to putting out a lot more great content. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Much love. Peace out.